We all must suffer one of two pains. Regardless of your choice of lifestyle and what you want to do, we must all suffer one of two pains. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And what we suggest to everybody is to consider the disciplines because disciplines weigh ounces, regrets weigh tons. You don't want to substitute a, a discipline for a regret. In our opinion, that would be a poor choice. Now, you can do it, but some things are poor trade-offs. The old prophet said, what if you gain the whole world, but it cost you your soul? Would that be worth it? And with a bit of intelligence, we say, no, that doesn't seem worth it. Even if you got the whole world, if you traded your soul, that experience would be so bitter and so awful and so devastating, it wouldn't be worth it. What if you got some gain by greed instead of legitimate ambition? I'm telling you, it might taste good up front, but it's going to turn bitter in the belly. Our world is and always will be a constant battle between the life of ease and its momentary rewards and a life of discipline and its far more significant rewards. Each has its own price, the price of discipline or the price of regret. We will pay one or the other. Imagine being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life. But you, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never used those talents. You never used those gifts. You never used those abilities. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you. And only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you died today, what dreams, what ideas, what books, what leadership, what voice, what story will die with you? develop the ability to act take action not hasty if it isn't required but don't lose much time here's the time to act when the idea is hot and the emotion is strong that's the time to act you say mr. Ron I'd like to have a library like yours see if you feel strong about that what you got to do is get the first book and then get the second book before the feeling passes and before the idea gets dim, action pronto, action immediate, action as soon as possible. Because if you don't, here's what happens. We call it the law of diminishing intent. We intend to when the idea strikes us. We intend to when the emotion is high. But now if you don't translate that into action fairly soon, now the intent starts to diminish, diminish, diminish. And a month from now, it's cold. A year from now, can't be found. So act, set up a discipline when the emotions are high and the idea is strong and clear and powerful. That's the time to set up the discipline. Somebody talks about good health and you're stirred. So, right, I need to get a book on nutrition. Get the book before the idea passes and before, before the emotion gets cold. Go for the book, start the library, start the process, fall on the floor, do some push-ups. Action, gotta take action. Otherwise, the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes. Unless you put it into a disciplined activity, capture it. Disciplines is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity. Disciplines. Now, here's what's important about disciplines. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive in saying, well, this doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. There are some things that matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. Okay. We all pity the man who says, well, this is the only place I let down. Not true. Key to take home. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Every letdown affects the rest. This is part of the educational process on personal development. If you don't take the walk around the block, 
you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't consist, you know, start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep a journal and you won't take pictures and you won't do this, you won't do wise things with your money, won't do wise things with your time, won't do wise things with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated and we say you have messed up. So the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these disciplines. Now here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest of your disciplines. Every new one affects the rest. That's why action is so important. The least action, the smallest action. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return from that one action, it'll inspire you to do the next one and the next one and the next one. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new. And you've started a whole new life process. Key. It's much easier to complain about the economy. It's much easier to complain about our elected officials. It's much easier to talk about the recession. That's much easier to come up with excuses why you can't do it. My mentor said something to me, Mike Williams. I want you to write this down. He said, anybody can complain. He said, if you do what is easy, that's complaining. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is easy, complain about your situation, your circumstances. If you do what is easy, stand around and be a volunteer victim like everybody else. If you do what is easy, surrender and give up on your dreams. Become depressed and bitter and angry. Anybody can do that. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. I got rich by the time I was 31 and it was easy. Now here's my definition of easy. Got to jot this down. My definition of easy, meaning something I could do. I figure if it's something you can do, it's easy. Now here's a parenthesis. Parenthesis, I worked hard at it. I found something I could do, which was easy, but I worked hard at it. I got up early and stayed up late, worked hard that six years. But what I did was easy, meaning it was something I could do. You say, well, Mr. Ron, if it was so easy, how come everybody else around you during that six years, how come they didn't get rich? Here's why. It's easy not to. <laughs> how else would you describe it? That's it. You say, no, no. For all of the rest of them, it was hard for them and it was easy for you. That's not true. You couldn't debate me on that in front of this intelligent audience. But here's the challenge. Let me give it to you in a philosophical phrase. I tend to be a little philosophical. Here it is. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. So you've got the choice here today of one of two easies. Easy to or what? Easy not to. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. Here it is in one sentence. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do every day for six years. Underline. I did not neglect. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune and I did not neglect to do it. Major reason for not having everything you want in America. Major reason for not having more of what you want in America. More health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything. Major reason why you don't get it. Simple answer. Neglect. Neglect. And here's the problem with neglect. It starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And here's what else is the problem. One neglect leads to another. Neglect to do wise things with your money, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your time. Neglect to do wise things with your time, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your business. One leads to another, leads to another. Pretty soon, neglect has you by the throat, emptying your purse, emptying your heart, emptying all of your chances for equities and power and all the good things. Neglect. 
What if you should be walking around the block every day for your good health and you don't? I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. You should do it. You could do it. You don't do it. That's called formula for disaster. All you've got to do is let that and a few other things accumulate for six years. And now you're driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, doing what you don't want to do, maybe having become what you really didn't want to become. I'm telling you, that's it. Just neglect along, drift along, and it's got you by the throat. It'll take all your values, leave you with just a little bit of dust in the summer wind, and it'll soon be gone. I hope I said that well. That's it. It's where I found myself at age 25 until my teacher came along and said, Mr. Owen, up till now, you've messed up. Let's see if we can't clean that up, change it all. I did change my life, not just the money, all the rest of the values that came pouring in when I understood that it was me. It was me. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline, self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to disciplines. The least lack of discipline, and it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit, right? The, the, the slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best, sure enough. You say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy, like I should, and I could, and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to discipline. I recommended the last time I was here, the little book, Richest Man in Babylon, and I said, I've lectured now to over 3 million people in the last 33 years, and I've recommended this little book to almost all of them, I think. Guess how many have actually gone and got this little book? Answer, very few. My best guess is 10%. Such an easy thing to do. In that last seminar, right, I suggested this little book, number one, is easy to find. Number two, it's easy to buy. The most you can pay for it, six, seven, eight dollars. You can borrow that from your kids. <laughs> and number three, it's easy to read. It's in story form. That's why I use it for teenagers, teaching them how to be rich by 40, 35, if you're extra bright, much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. But if it's easy to find and easy to buy, and if it's easy to read, why wouldn't everybody go get it? We don't know. What do you know? You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Here's how profound it is. Some do and some don't. Now here's the numbers. About 10% do. 90% don't or won't. We don't know the mystery of that. And I'm telling you, 10 years from now, those numbers will still be the same. 10% will, 90% won't. The numbers don't change, only the faces change. You're looking at one of the faces. I used to belong to the 90% who couldn't be bothered even if it was easy. Guess how many people have a library card? Wisdom of the world available. Transform your life in any value amount you want. By the way, how much is a library card in Texas? Free, here's what free is, easy. I mean, it can't be any easier than free. Somebody says, well, would you bring it by? Well, no, at least you gotta go get it. No. Wisdom of the world available. Transform your life spiritually, socially, personally, economically, and every other way. Teach you how to be rich and powerful and sophisticated and healthy and influential. How many people have a library card? Answer, 
95, 97% couldn't be bothered. Guy specializes in happy hour, but he doesn't have a card. <laughs> and now readily and quickly blames the government, and blames his company and blames policy and blames the pay scale. When if he only knew, if he joined the 3%, here's my advice to you today, walk away from the 97%. Don't talk like they talk. Don't act like they act. Don't go where they go. Don't specialize in what they specialize in. Throw away the blame list they cling to. Start you a new life. You say, well, is it as simple as getting a library card and join the 3%? And the answer is, of course, of course. That's how easy this stuff is. This is so easy. It's so simple. It's not complex. You don't need a 2000 year old guru. You don't need multi-track affirmations i'm telling you don't affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion <laughs> Keep. don't let somebody sweep you into some contrary way to nature itself says unless you labor the miracle of the seed and the soil and the seasons and god and all the other stuff that's available sunshine and rain that's not available to you by affirmation it is only available to you by labor so labor well Learn well, discipline yourself well, and you can have all the treasures you want. This stuff's easy and simple. It's not ocean waves and seagulls. You don't have to move to Sedona where all the force fields come together in Arizona. <laughs> Let's teach our kids the simple ways to transform their health, number one, their economics, number two, their ability to communicate, number three, their life and treasure and lifestyle, number four, spirituality, number five, and the list goes on and on. Let's not leave out any of the least of disciplines that encourage us to do the next one, to do the next one, to do the next one. First thing you know, this whole scenario for you is spinning up instead of out of control on the negative side. This is all you got to do. It's as simple as this. It's as simple as a start, committing yourself to life change. And once you start down this road, I promise you, you'll join the 10% and the 3%. We're going to talk financial independence in just a little while. Guess how many people can retire from the income of their own personal resources when it comes time to retire? Answer, 5%. In the most independent country in the world, 95% are dependent, 5% are independent. Take charge of your own retirement. I'm telling you, if you take charge of your own retirement through personal development and all these skills we've taught today, plus what's coming up, financial independence, I'm telling you, take charge of your own retirement, you can multiply it at least by five, maybe by 10, maybe by 20, maybe by 100. Let the government take care of it, some company take care of it, you got to divide by five. <laughs> take charge of your own life, take charge of your own day, take charge of your own conversation, take charge of your own family, take charge of your own possibilities and learn these skills, develop this kind of strategy, and I'm telling you, life will open up for you. Join the 3%, join the 10%, join the 5%, walk away from the 95%. Guess when I went and got this little book, Richest Man in Babylon, the same day I heard about it, I went and got it. Somebody says, well, Mr. Owen, does that make you different than most other people? And the answer is yes. Somebody says, well, why is that? We don't know. We don't know. What do you know? You don't know. I don't know. None of us knows. Some do and some don't. The numbers don't change. Only the faces change. From those who get in on a seminar like this, listen to a dynamic sermon, read a book, listen to some cassettes, take seriously the next conversation of a friend who wants to level with you, and do something about it. And you can walk away from the 97%, not live there anymore. Because if you don't, the next six years of your life will be like the last six. Mr. Shove said to me, Mr. Rohn, six years now you've been working. I'm telling you the next six years of your life is gonna be like the last six, unless you take advantage and start making these personal changes. I made the changes, totally revolutionized my life. So take a look at the next five years of your life. It's gonna be like the last five, unless, 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 unless you change. And if you will change, everything will change. Join the 5%. 10 years from now, the numbers are gonna be the same. But I'm telling you, some faces in this audience can change and start showing up in the 3% crowd, in the 5% crowd, in the 10% crowd, 
and thereby dynamically affect your life and your future.